What's up, Dream Warriors? Welcome back to another episode of a podcast on Elm Street. I'm Mark. And I'm Brooke. And this is our last week of our prehistoric horror month, I should say. Um, it's been a fun month. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. Quite we've, we've had <clears throat> some, uh, some funny movies mixed in with, well, I guess all three of them have been They've had like a lot of comedy mixed in with them. Yeah, definitely. But this one, the piece de resistance. Yeah. Um, no real comedy involved a little bit, but yeah, not much. No. But we, we wouldn't have a prehistoric horror month without including this movie. Yeah. That movie is 1993's Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah. Uh, I had never coined this as a horror movie yeah. until our fucking um, intro episode that we recorded <laughs> like two years ago. And you were like, yeah, Jurassic Park is one of my favorite horror movies. And I was like, wait a second. He's on to something. <laughs> I never pictured it as a horror movie, but really it, it is. It can be. Yeah, like it's more of a thriller. <laughs> yeah. But there is a lot of uh <clears throat> things it takes from horror. Definitely. Like in this one, um there's only like two people that really like you see die really mm-hmm. in the movie. Yeah. Um but yeah, like their deaths are memorable. Like even in the second one, I haven't watched in all, quite a few years, but the one I always remember is whenever they're in the waterfall and then the guy mm. goes out and like the blood comes down the waterfall, yeah. like fucking sick. Yeah. 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 And like, there's a lot of like, there, the, there's only two deaths, like you said, but there's a lot of like horrific imagery mm-hmm. and like very suspenseful scenes in this movie. Yeah. And yeah, I'm all for it being, considered a horror movie it's it's a creature feature right yeah. like yeah. no matter wh- however you want to put it that's it's, it's it, what it it's is just a very big budget creature feature yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly um but before we really dive into this movie i want to know what you've been up to this week bro <clears throat> so this week uh been up to quite a bit since we uh uh yeah i guess quite a bit um so to start off with my non-horror movies uh watched a movie called the lost city yeah which is on paramount plus now i was actually surprised to see it on there Mm -hmm, they like they don't have a lot on there Mm -hmm. but they added some like new releases that the jackass for forever is on there yeah um and then they added this and uh I liked it a lot. Um, it's not like great, but it's just a funny throwback movie. Like, you know what you're getting. It's very aware of itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sandra Bullock and Shane Tatum have good chemistry. And Daniel Radcliffe's amazing in it. So it was I mean, fun. Daniel Radcliffe's in it? Yeah, he plays the villain. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who do you think had better chemistry, Sandy and Channing or Sandy and Ryan Reynolds? uh in oh the from i haven't watched the proposal in a very long time uh, okay so i'd have to say this for me all right yeah um and i watched we watched a documentary that's on hbo now uh it's roadrunner a film about anthony bourdain oh is it good it is good yeah it's really good yeah um if you like anthony bourdain you'd mm-hmm. like it like i didn't really know much about him i just knew him from his tv show uh like no reservations tv show no, um, the other one where he goes to like crazy countries. Oh yeah. Uh, fuck. Anyway, and the, it's like the the tourist attract, like black tourism or dark tourism or something. Basically, like that. basically, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, the documentary is really good. It, it touches on. I don't want to say his like fall into darkness because he's always had that behind him, I guess, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's really a tragic story of his. And 
whenever he passed, like a lot of people were very like upset at him and angry with him. Like even a couple of people in the, in the movie they're interviewing, they're like, like, fuck you. Like, really? Why would you do that? You know? Yeah. So, um, but it's really good. I'd recommend it. It's pretty long. It's like two hours long. Yeah. But it's good. Nice. Um, I watch, continue my Nicolas Cage uh, watch and um, watch Ghost Rider. Nice. It's been a very long time since I've seen that movie. <laughs> it definitely does not hold up. No, nah, I figured. But some of the scenes when he's full Ghost Rider. Yeah. It's so cheesy. It's fucking hilarious. I was dying <laughs> laughing at some parts. Uh, it's not good. And I'm not looking forward to watching the sequel. So no, the sequel's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And then I continue my watch of Puppet Master movies. Oh, uh, shit. It's been a while since I watched one. So I watched Puppet Master The Legacy. I didn't fully watch it, but I still counted on Letterboxd because I deserve that for watching even 15 minutes of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> literally it's just a, uh, like it's clips from yeah. the previous movies. Like it's like an hour and 20 minutes of just clips of every single movie that come before it so i didn't even bother watching the whole thing as like this is a waste of time yeah i don't get why they would do that yeah it doesn't make any sense uh they just added the rest of them to uh to me as well oh did they yeah yeah so they're uh, all on there now yeah Shit. yeah okay. at least most of them uh and then i watched uh puppet master versus demonic toys <laughs> uh i've never seen any of the demonic toys movies but this one was okay. It actually has um, Corey Feldman in it. Right, yeah. He's like the main guy. Uh, it was okay. It wasn't great, but like some of the demonic toys are fucking hilarious. Like there's this like baby that like reminds me of Chucky. Yeah. And it just like says ridiculous things and stuff. Oh, it was funny. <laughs> um, And then I watched uh, Videodrome last night. Nice uh because i was like had a really tough day at work on tuesday like we had this tornado we're dealing with so work was just like nutso and Mm -hmm. i just i started watching the george carlin documentary and then i was like nah, i'm not feeling this right now so throw on video drone because they added a bunch of conenberg movies on there on crave yeah uh i'm guessing first new movie that's coming out um so i watched video drone it was pretty good it's weird yeah like it's on that that list i sent you like the top 250 horror movies it's yeah. pretty like low far down like 250 or 240 area mm-hmm. um it was very weird practical effects were like amazing but yeah. like i don't think i like it as much as other people do <clears throat> and i don't know if i'd watch it again maybe just to kind of get a more understanding of it mm-hmm. it's very weird yeah i watched it for the first time last year too mm-hmm. it was yeah they have crash on there i don't know if that's the same crash that like won the oscar i doubt it i don't think so yeah okay uh and then lastly went to the movies and watched men <laughs> uh alex garland's new movie um and i just finished uh uh that's the podcast the rainer podcast uh not the watch um any one of them and they were talking about alex garland i didn't know that he was a writer before doing directing movies oh me either like he wrote the book uh 28 days later oh really he wrote a couple other like uh books he wrote the beach okay i didn't know that so yeah i guess uh fuck who's the guy that we did that directed uh 28 days later um Anyway, but those two have like worked together a bunch. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, Garland is like is uh, is more of a writer and like a screenplay guy before he did uh, directing. Okay, uh, Danny Boyle. Yeah, Danny 20, Boyle. That's it. Twenty days later. Uh, but yeah, Men is definitely an A twenty four movie. Um, <laughs> I don't. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I'm kind of in between right now. I'm definitely gonna watch it again when it comes out on digital or whatever whatever comes out 
Yeah. Uh, acting and cinematography was great. Uh, the last like 10 minutes of the movie is just, I'm never going to get that out of my head. Really? Yes. It's going to be engraved there forever. Fuck. So maybe that says something about the movie and the way Garland just goes there. Hmm. Um, and uh, I guess Annihilation is a book too. Oh, really? And I guess the movie, like he just went totally changed the book, apparently. Hmm. Yeah. It's weird. So, uh, yeah, pretty busy week. Uh, I guess so. I don't think we've recorded for a while anyway. So, yeah, we're, we're a little late into the week with yeah. this one just because of, like you said, there's a fucking tornado that ripped through your city. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah, that's it. What uh, would you watch? Fuck, not nearly as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched one movie. Okay. Uh, Slash and Captain posted this movie on his story saying that it was one of his favorite movies of 2021. Um, the Cursed. Oh, yeah. Did you finish it? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I liked it. I definitely need to rewatch it because I wasn't totally into it, but it is. It's a good movie. Yeah. Um, but like Anthony and I were talking about it and like, it's a period piece. And I just, I feel like I wasn't really in the mood for it whenever I was watching it. Yeah. But it is, it's a really well done movie. Um, and I'm not a huge werewolf guy, but this is like a different spin on it. I feel like for some reason, directors and stuff have totally changed like werewolf movies Mm -hmm. in the past, like few years. Yeah. Like the last two I've watched, like I both really liked um, the two comedies there, uh, Wolf of Snow Hollow and yeah. uh, Werewolves Within. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like this one kind of, it might be like a comedy like the other two, but kind of different view. Like yeah. The period piece and all that, like just different. And it doesn't look like a werewolf either. It's, oh, okay. It's, <clears throat> yeah, it's weird. Um, but yeah, so I watched that and then. Um, the new season of Love, Death, and Robots came out. So oh, yeah. I'm like halfway through that. Uh, definitely recommend checking it out. Um, David yeah. Fincher directed one of them. Oh, really? And then he was like the executive producer on one of the other ones. Oh, okay. So he def- he had his hand in two of them so far mm. that I've seen. Um, the one is fucking nuts, man. Like the one that he directed, it's so sick. That's cool. Yeah, I need to go back and watch it because I think the first season had like, was like 18 or 20 episodes or something crazy. Yeah, the first season was very good. Yeah, I I think I like just binge, I want to say three quarters of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I just got burnt out at one point. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot. And like, not like they're all just they're different stories in each one. right? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to like really follow, I guess, but. There's one on this season. It's called uh, Night of the Mini Dead. <laughs> and it's it's a seven minute short film. And it's basically just Night of the Living Dead. But like, um, like in fast forward mode, basically. And they're all like little tiny, like <laughs> things, like little toys almost. And it was hilarious, man. Oh my but God. it was really cool how they did it. But yeah, definitely check it out. Um. I feel like I was watching something else too, a show, but I can't remember. Yeah. Anyways, I didn't write it down, but yeah, pretty boring. Um, been reading a lot because we have this reading challenge that we have going on. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I really put it on the back burner for a while. So I've been trying to hammer out some books. Yeah. My power was out for a day and a half. So I started reading The Shining because uh, you let me borrow it like two fuck, years ago. Like, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like I've blown through it. Like I think I'm almost halfway done the book. Like I'm nice. over 300 pages in. That's good. Uh, and then we just started a book club with uh, Porcelain Peak guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're doing the book House of Leaves which you've read. Mm -hmm. Uh, I read the intro today and like, just looking at like the first page, I'm like already so confused about what this is that we're reading. Like it's a tough read because every page is like different. Like, yeah, 
it's hard to explain like the the format of the page is different like it's really cool but then like at the bottom like the first page it has like part xxx like wasn't in chapter six or something like i have no idea what yeah any of that stuff means but there's a lot of footnotes and shit like that yeah yeah but once you get into it like it's a it's a really good story okay I remember a while back they were talking about making it into a TV show or something like that, but I was like, I don't know how this, how it would work. Like it definitely wouldn't capture the feeling of the book properly. No, because the, the way that the book's written with all the different shit throughout it, that's what really gives it its, its edge, I guess. But yeah, I don't think they'd be able to replicate that in its show, but yeah, pretty boring week for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right ready to talk about this movie yes sir sweet okay like we said in the intro this week we're talking about 1993's jurassic park before we do i'm not gonna forget you this week. remember this time <laughs> <laughs> uh what are you drinking uh i am drinking a mclean's maple coffee mild oh Good crack, good crack. I'm drinking. That's really good. Is it? Is that yeah. your first time having it? I don't think so. It tastes like uh, maple candy. Ooh. Yeah. Might have to get some. Um, I'm drinking my third last can of the Dominion City box. Nice. Two Flags IPA. Um, I... Th- yeah, I obviously drank one of them before because this is my last one of it. But yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> the one that's like super hoppy. Yeah. Well, it's got an aftertaste to it, too. All right. The synopsis, very misleading synopsis. A pragmatic paleontologist touring an almost complete theme park on an island in Central America is tasked with protecting a couple of kids after a power failure causes the park's cloned dinosaurs to run loose. Mm. I mean, that's one storyline throughout it. (laughs) Kind of. There's there's like (laughs) three different storylines intertwining throughout. Yeah. Um, And we have one of them for the synopsis. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like very loosely. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, the movie was directed by the one and only Steven Spielberg, Mm -hmm. uh, who needs no introduction, but I'm going to rhyme some off. The Indiana Jones franchise, E.T., Jaws, uh, The Lost World which is the sequel to this movie. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Hook, Saving Private Ryan, and Schindler's List. Yeah, he's done a lot. He has. um, Um, Directed and produced. Yeah. Question for you. 20 or 30 years into the future. Okay. Do you think there will be a director like him? ever again like do you think like i just told this name out there do you think nolan would be like a director that you know people would talk about in the same light as spielberg like i think nolan is probably the only one that could be put on that yeah. type of pedestal because like steven spielberg and james cameron are both up there yeah, but, I feel like Cameron has taken like a step down for me just because like he hasn't been like really relevant in a while. Because he's been making 17 fucking Avatar <laughs> movies. <laughs> he's banking his whole career on these, man. Oh my God, they take time, dude. Give him a break. Yeah. I can't believe we just got a trailer flat and they announced it, what, like fucking 12 years ago? Yeah. Nuts. Um. Yeah, that's a good question. I 
Christopher Nolan, he's got to be up there. Yeah. I mean, even just yeah. with his Dark Knight trilogy and like Inception. Yeah. Uh, who else could be up there? I mean, like you said Fincher, but like, I don't but think he, he's done enough. Well, and he's been around for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd love to say like Robert Eggers, but I don't think he'll be, he won't be up there. I think it's too early. Yeah. yeah. But I, I like the direction that he's going with his movies. Mm-hmm. And I think he has the potential to be like one of the top guys. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, like you said, he's only done three movies now. Yeah. Um, I almost watched The Northman last night, and then I watched five. Oh yeah, I watched five minutes of it, and my AirPods were dead, and I didn't feel like going down to get my headphones. And Sarah was yelling at me because she was trying to watch TV. Huh, huh. I said, "Fuck it, I'll read my book." But yeah, because I'm just like looking at other ones, and like there's no one really in the same like kind of age as kind of Nolan. Mm. Like, cause like, I mean, you got Tarantino, but I mean, he's kind of been around since the nineties. Yeah. Scorsese has been around the same time, you know, so there isn't really Ridley Scott, but I mean, he's kind of the same age. Yeah. I don't know. For younger guys, I would, yeah, I think it's gotta be Nolan. Yeah. Cause like. Who else has produced or oh actually I just saw one uh Dennis Villeneuve possibly yeah although he hasn't put out like a lot of movies but like he did, movies he did Dune right that yeah Dune yeah. uh Blade Runner 2049 right. and uh Arrival yeah he could be I mean those are three bangers too mm-hmm. Dune especially like that's his fucking yeah, he'll have Doom Part 2 coming out. So, yeah. Hmm. It's an interesting question. I'd like to hear other people's thoughts on it. Well, I think at, at the end of the day, I think Spielberg will be, like, the guy. Well, yeah. I mean, like, look at what he's done, man. And, like, the movies he's done have, like, been revolutionary, too. Yeah, like, it's not just, like, the movies, but the properties, yeah behind it like jurassic park has now spawned the sixth movie will be coming out yeah um like indiana jones Indiana jones yeah and like even his standalone movies like et uh was huge and still is huge and like jaws okay it spawned a couple of shitty sequels but like that movie as a whole was Mm -hmm. that was a revolutionary movie for its time yeah and so many movies like we just did piranha and it was it paid homage to it so much Mm -hmm. and then like i talked about it on that episode like we had orca from back then we also had the original piranha that came out like there's it so many movies have taken that sort of format and have kind of just spun it on its head and then we did Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and that's a fucking incredible movie. Yeah. And then like Saving Private <laughs> Ryan and Schindler's List. Like those are two incredible war movies. Yeah. He's all over yeah. the place. Like he does fantasy, he does horror, he does action, he does like the the war dramas. It's it's crazy what he's capable of doing. I just want to check something really quick. You can continue on while all this right. is up. Um, I guess we'll move on to the cast list then. <clears throat> starting off we have sam neill who plays dr alan grant um he reprised his role in jurassic park 3 and he's also coming back for uh dominion which comes out next month um he was in hunt for the wilder people the piano thor ragnarok and peaky blinders did you find what you're looking for um not yet okay i'll keep going um, next, I have Laura Dern, who played Ellie. Uh, she was in The Wild, Marriage Story, Blue Velvet, F is for Family, which I forgot that she was in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's hilarious. Uh, Big Little Lies, The Last Jedi. And she also came back for Jurassic Park 3. And she's also coming back for Dominion. Yep. 
Uh, I saw a movie on her IMDb that came out like last year, two years ago. Uh, Grizzly 2. Yeah. The Revenge. Yeah. Did you see who was in that movie? No. Like, go look at the top build cast. If I was like, what the fuck? That's so random. Like, I don't know if they're like in it for a while or if it's just like a cameo. Jesus. We have Jonathan Reese Davies, George Clooney, <laughs> Laura Dern, Charlie Sheen. Uh wow. Yeah, that's I don't know. That's weird. That is that's a really weird cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were any of them in the original? I no, no. I looked. Yeah, no. <clears throat> I just watched the original last year too. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Was um, I wanted to look up and see how many of Spielberg's movies were in like the top 250 of IMDb, Fuck. but they All didn't have it. Uh, but they do have it on like letterboxd top 250. Yeah. So he only has three movies in letterboxd top 250. What? Yeah. How? I don't know. Which don't three? Know. Um, See if I can find it quickly here. Letterbox top 250, though, is like it has That's, so many fucking yeah. foreign movies and shit and on they it. They got Schindler's List. Yeah. I'm guessing Saving Private Ryan. And probably Jurassic Park, I would assume. Mm, yeah. I could see it being in there over Indiana Jones. Yeah, I, I can't find the third one. Hmm. But anyway, that's crazy. I don't know if I've seen a bad movie that he's done. I'm sure you could find one. <laughs> yeah, I probably could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back to this cast list. Um, next up, I have Jeff Goldblum, who plays Ian Malcolm. Uh, he's known for The Fly, which is a movie that we did a while back. Um, the Grand Budapest Hotel, Independence Day one and two uh thor ragnarok jurassic world fallen kingdom and the lost world and he is also coming back for dominion yeah um richard attenborough r.i.p um he played john hammond he was also in the lost world miracle on 34th street uh the original dr doolittle oh wow yeah um the great escape and the flight of the phoenix mm-hmm. um little tidbit of trivia he stopped acting from like 1979 all the way up until 1993 for this movie really this was his first movie in like uh almost 20 years hmm. that's crazy yeah uh, and do you know who his brother is of course <laughs> of course yeah um yeah uh i have three honorable mentions for actors and then two honorable mentions for guys in the background. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, I have Wayne Knight. Uh, fuck him in this movie. I think I'm just, I need to come to terms with the fact that I'm not a Wayne Knight fan. Okay. Um, I hate him in this movie. Yeah. I hated him in Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he annoyed the fuck out of me in Space Jam. Yeah, that's uh, fair. And I, I don't I honestly don't know if I've seen him in anything else. I'm sure I have. He was in Rat Race. Oh yeah, didn't like him in that either. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I just don't like Wayne Knight. Um we have very young Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Uh did you notice he has like a very heavy lisp in this movie? Um it might have just been because he always really. had a cigarette in his mouth. Yeah. That, that might have been why. Um, and then I have B.D. Wong, who played uh, Dr. Wu. Mm. Um, and he's reprised his character throughout the franchise as well. Yeah, I like that they brought him back for uh, mm-hmm. Jurassic World. Yeah. Um, and then I have John Williams, who did the music for the movie uh, because he deserves all the recognition. His score for this movie 
really makes it that much more special. Yeah. Uh, the music in this is world renowned. You play one of the tracks from this movie and people are going to know what it is. Yep. Um, where would you rank this score on his list? On his list? Like, out of his uh, movies, like, where would it does it rank for you? I would, like, top three. Yeah. It'd have to be top three. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go through his entire uh, list of movies that he's done. And, I don't know. I can't see it not being in the top three, though. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't know, man. <laughs> This music is so like iconic. iconic. Yeah. But then also like Star Wars, just mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not saying it's the top, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cause he did Jaws too. Like, yeah. That's that score is only like there's only the one track that's like really iconic, but mm-hmm. still it's a good score. Um, and then, of course, I have Stan Winston, who did all of the animatronic dinosaurs for this one. Did we do one of his movies? Yep. Uh, I don't remember Let me what take it was, a so. guess. I, I Was it Pumpkinhead? No, I feel like... No. Whichever movie it was, they, they used the model from that for the, for the movie. What movie was it that we did? I feel like it, it was Pumpkinhead. Uh, Aliens. Oh. Was one. Um, and I think, yeah, they used the alien animatronic for Pumpkinhead. Mm. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be hard to find. Oh, yeah. He directed Pumpkinhead. Okay, that's why it's fucking... Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they used the the alien animatronic for uh, the creature in Pumpkinhead. Shit, he, was, he did the special effects for Constantine as well. Interesting. I just watched that. All right. Um, I've gotten through my whole list of honorable mentions. I don't know if you have anybody else that you wanted to add. Uh, not really. Uh, the actor that played Lex and Tim, uh, oh. they don't really, well, Lex, the girl that plays her, I think it's like Ariana. She, she does like painting now or something like that. And she's done like some movies. Yeah. Well, this is definitely her most well-known Same with Tim. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah and they were good too like mm-hmm. they they could have moved on and did did mm-hmm. more movies for sure um i read a little bit of trivia and this movie sparked uh a love interest for her with dinosaurs and after they made this movie she actually went out with the real life dr alan grant like who his character was based off of like the paleontologist oh, okay. yeah. and like actually went out on a dig that's sick. So like she was still a kid and she went out on a fucking that'd be so cool. Dig. Yeah, it would be. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they actually just brought it up. Uh Laura Dern did um because this she was they're doing press for the new movie, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she was saying that the age gap between her and Sam Neill at the time of filming, like looking back at it, it it just felt feels very wrong and feel right because oh, really? she was only 23 when they filmed this movie holy shit yeah really yeah and i'm guessing sam neil was probably late 30s maybe when yeah. they filmed this yeah you could tell he was definitely older than her yeah um so it kind of makes like the relationship kind of weird like you know especially for her knowing that she's so young Oh my god. Uh hold on, I need to do the math here. (laughs) He was 46, man. He was double her age. 
Really? Yeah, he was born in 1947. That's why I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Jeez. He, he was, was 46? Born... Yeah, he was born two years after World War II finished, for fuck's sakes. So he's almost 80? Yeah. I guess. 1947 he was born. Wow. 2022 minus 1947. He's 75. Jesus. And they're going to be in Dominion together and they're still together and shit. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> Ellie Grant is a fucking uh, gold digger. I guess so. She's not just Jesus. a fossil digger. She's a gold digger. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts, man. Wow. Um, fuck, there's something else. That's good. Oh, um, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum actually got married after this movie, too. Or no, they were together for two years. And they ended their relationship before they got married. Oh, okay. Okay. But apparently he's uh, pretty well known to um, woo his co-stars. Really? Yeah. I mean, like... Sly dog. Did you see him in The Fly? And, like, <laughs> did you see, like, him in this movie? Like, Yeah. He's all... He's... In- I don't know if he was, like, a sex icon at the time. Like... Yeah. But I mean, just the scene in this movie uh, reminded me very much of Princess Leia whenever she was with <laughs> Jabba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I. Yeah, there's just something about him. Like he's he's very charismatic, um, yeah. and he's not a bad looking dude. And like he gets the shirt unbuttoned like halfway down, and he did mm-hmm. it in this movie, and he did it in The Fly. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. All right. Enough uh, gushing over Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> let's talk about this movie, dude. All right. Let's do it. Um, what does this movie mean to you? Everything. Yeah. This movie, from the first day I watched it till the last time I watched it, which was yesterday, yeah um it's one of my all-time favorites yeah it uh i don't know i don't know how to describe it it's it's one of those movies that like i could watch like a hundred times a year and i wouldn't Mm -hmm. get sick of it yeah um i still get like I st- like my heart still pounds during the fucking Raptor scene and like the T-Rex scene, whenever they first, whenever we first see him. Um, and like this most recent watch, like I was on the edge of my seat, like how I always am every time I watch this movie and like just the way that it's shot and the way that it's done and the, the, uh, the score that goes with it. It's just mm-hmm. phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. movie. Yeah. It just holds up so much. Mm -hmm. Like even today, like, yeah, like it's it's crazy. The fact that it still looks as good as it did back then. Yeah. Blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. Like this, this movie, like we've, we've had all the loss or uh, the, um, um, Jurassic world movies. Mm-hmm. in like the past recent years and like this one holds up with that like for for visuals man like and it this does. came out this came out in 1993 yeah yeah like, it's 20 29 years old yeah yeah i think yeah yeah 29 <laughs> years old <laughs> man my math is off today but yeah i don't know i love this movie um, I'm very happy that uh, they were taking the time to sit down and talk about it. Yeah. Me too. What, ab- what about you? Uh, so I guess like from a very young age, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Like, I-, I mean, I'm sure every kid was, um, but I guess I was like super obsessed. Like I knew the names of dinosaurs, like, mm-hmm. Fuck, Brooke at three years old was smarter than Brooke now. Like, I mean, I can name like maybe, you know, four or five dinos, like the real yeah. names. But uh, yeah, I guess I was obsessed with them. And this was the first movie I watched in theaters. Okay. Um, 
my mom and my dad took me to see it because she thought, hey, you know, he loves dinosaurs. So <laughs> let's go watch it. Um, I don't remember anything from it. The only part I remember is whenever the lawyer gets eaten. Mm. I was sitting on my mom's lap during it. We had like a pillow and everything. Yeah. And when he got eight, my mom, you know, covered my eyes like, yeah. uh, this isn't for a four year old. Um, yeah. And I feel like this movie is a movie that I could like without watching it for two or three years, I can still say every single thing that happens yeah. in, in sequential order. Like, I never get bored of it. Uh, like you said, I could just watch this over and over again. Yeah. Like if, if I didn't love the movie so much and like, if I didn't like actually really want to watch it for this, like mm-hmm. I could have hopped onto this recording and, and we could have just talked about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that's how many times I've seen it. Like and- while I was watching, I obviously wrote down like all the notes of like what was happening and stuff, but then retyping it on my computer, like, I wrote some questions and that was it. Yeah. Because I knew what we would talk about. You know? Exactly. It's yeah. it's one of the very few movies that I can do that with. Because like, I, I'm a distracted movie watcher. Me too. Yeah. So, I got ADD. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm playing on my phone or I'm fucking walking into the kitchen or I'm uh-huh. fucking taking a piss and I don't pause it. I just let it keep playing. So yeah. like oftentimes I miss certain parts and this one, like, yeah. I could sit down and just rhyme it all off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, so this movie means a lot to both of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, another person who unfortunately couldn't be here for the recording. Yes. But uh, hopefully she'll be on for Dominion. That's that right. is uh, Felicia from Two Chicks. Yeah. So this episode probably would have been like four hours long because this one's <laughs> going to be a long one anyway. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately she is sick, so she couldn't join us, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, in your mind, who is the star of this movie? Ooh. And I'm including dinosaurs. The T-Rex. Okay. The T-Rex. I, I'm going with the Raptors. I agree, but the T-Rex has that final scene mm-hmm. where it's just roaring inside the the facility and then the banner falls down and it's just, oh man, that yeah. is such an incredible closing scene for this movie. It is, yeah. And I think that's what gives it the edge because the okay. raptors, the raptors are terrifying, man. And they yeah. are, they're like the most menacing in yeah. the movie yeah they're the bad guy yeah in the movie yeah absolutely mm-hmm. and they're everywhere like you yeah fucking they're they're chasing after laura dern when she's trying to turn on the power and then all of a sudden they're inside yeah. the facility chasing the kids like they're all over the place mm-hmm. it's because in like every movie that's come out it's always been like for the most part like mm-hmm. the raptors are they have the most screen time in all the movies yeah well maybe not this one a bunch because like they're kind of hiding yeah but in the rest of the movies like you're running and hiding from the raptors mm-hmm. whereas the t-rex like yeah he's he's the fucking king of the jungle like mm-hmm. like they're not running from him per se but you know they're trying to stay away from him <laughs> <laughs> yeah um one thing i read that was kind of cool about the raptors uh Steven Spielberg wanted them to be like nine or 10 feet tall, um, Mm -hmm. which is significantly bigger than what Raptors actually were. Okay. Um, But he wanted them to be more menacing. Um, So they ended up creating these Raptors that fit the profile that he wanted. And then shortly after this movie was made, uh, paleontologists actually found the fossils of uh, what they called the Utah Raptor. Oh, which is a nine to 10 foot tall raptor. Wow. So uh, I can't remember who it was that made the joke, whether it was Stan Winston or I don't think it was Spielberg, but it was, it was one of them. Mm. And they said, Oh yeah, we created it. And then they, they discovered it. That's awesome. Yeah. I thought that was <laughs> cool. Cause Raptors like, 
they're saying that like the closest relative to a raptor now is a chicken. Yeah. Which yeah. is insane to me. Like, yeah. I mean, chickens are psychos, but like they're not raptor material. Mm-hmm. Well, like the opening scene where he first meets, well, one of them where he first meets uh, Dr. Grant and Ellie. Yeah. Um, you have that. They find the, uh, the velociraptor like skeleton mm-hmm. and then the little fucking brat in the background. <laughs> like, what is he? It's just, uh, it doesn't look with, so scary. Yeah. He calls it something like a chicken with no wings or something like that. Yeah. And then, like, Dr. Grant, like, he hates kids, uh, and yeah. uh, he's just, like, it's a little shit. He's, like, oh, he, like, brings out his little uh, raptor talent. Raptor talent, and he's kind of telling them, like, how they work. Like, they don't seem menacing, but there's more of them there, and mm-hmm. they'll cut you, like, across your throat or your stomach, and then he's, like, and then you're not dead when they're eating you yeah. <laughs> the kid's face is just hilarious he's like so show it a little respect and the kids are just like oh okay <laughs> yeah 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 i love how he just goes at this kid like no remorse at all just like <laughs> yeah. shuts him the fuck up <laughs> yeah oh uh, so funny uh and yeah like the scary scenes start right off the bat mm-hmm. you know you get they're transporting the raptors there and you have all these guys, and then you have uh, Muldoon, who's this, uh, is that a poacher? He's like a park ranger, I guess, in Africa or something On like that. steroids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. Um, so they're trying to transfer the raptor. <clears throat> and the, this, like, gatekeeper guy, I don't know, it's kind of silly, but he lifts up the gate. And somehow the raptor moves the the enclosure and he gets pulled in. Um, and then just like the camera view of him, of the camera inside the cage looking at the raptor. And the raptor's like looking at him because like it's just so fucking smart. Yeah. And then apparently a $20 million lawsuit uh, is happening <laughs> because of this. <laughs> yeah, it's a little intense. <clears throat> The the starting of this movie, it jumps around quite a bit until we get that like solid foundation of who the characters are. Because yeah. like it starts with what you just said, and then it moves on to like the Dominican Republic, um, where they find the amber with the, the mosquito inside of it. Yeah. So it's like it's really setting the foundation of like the story moving it forward um in like two short opening scenes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've read the book and I know that you said that you wanted to read it now, but like, obviously the book explains so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's super fucking interesting. Like the whole in-gen stuff in the book is it's wild, man. I think I read it on IMDb, but the scene where they are on like the ride yeah, where it has the DNA person, I mm-hmm. guess they, because you said the book has, you know, a lot more info on all of that, how they do it. So this one have this little like short video of that kind of explaining all of it mm-hmm. quickly, which I think worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good way of doing it. Uh, yeah. So the park that he's opening, it's basically an amusement park. Uh, they created dinosaurs by getting mosquito blood that was found in Amber um, and then combining it with like frog DNA to make mm-hmm. the dinos. Uh, I mean, it's kind of far fetched, but you know, it's it's it is and it's not because they in 2005, um, I forget what it was they discovered, but in 2005, they discovered something, and basically, like the trivia said, like, so maybe sometime in the future, like, this actually could happen because, like, they they found enough of what they needed in order to to clone it. Interesting. So, like, the way that they explain it in the movie is that, like, they have, D- like, sample DNA, and it it's not the full DNA strain. So they just mm-hmm. take the frog DNA because it's reptilian and just kind of, like, place it where they need to, yeah. to fill the gaps. So I don't know, man. I'm not a scientist, but to me, it seems like it's believable. Okay. But maybe I'm just being naive. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, Hammond needs two, I guess, professional signatures, like people who have background in dinosaurs to sign off on the park to, you know, basically make sure that you know, they approve it. I don't know. It's, uh, and then the lawyer's there to kind of make sure that, you know, everything goes smoothly and that he can mm-hmm. sign off onto it. Um, they get Ian Malcolm, who's, I don't know what his real job is. <laughs> he says he's a chaotician, which like, I don't know how that pertains to dinosaurs, but. I don't know if it means that like they brought him there to, to see that there's not, cause like, I feel like the way that he, his mind works is that like, he's all about chaos theories. Right. So mm-hmm. like he, they brought him in to have a person who can like visualize um, potential scenarios or something like that. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, I'm blowing smoke at my ass. I'm just like kind of yeah. uh, coming up with a theory on the fly, mm-hmm. but like if they have him there and he can see like, Oh yeah, they have all this technology that's for security and all this shit. Um, this is top of the line stuff. Like there's not going to be any chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Until the power goes out. <laughs> um i think hammond is a fucking nut job dude this watch i i hated him yeah he's stupid man <laughs> like, for lack of a better word like he's so proud of this and like after they go and see the dinos you learn that it's all females in the park they uh What's the word I'm looking for? They made sure that there's no males, I guess, because mm-hmm. they can choose that, I guess. And yeah. like the whole time, like Jeff Gull or Malcolm is like, you can't do that. Like uh, animals and stuff, they learn to, they can change the ways, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, but life, uh, life, uh, finds a way finds, yeah exactly <laughs> uh so they're basically like all eating and hammond like asked them uh so like what do you think and they're just like ripping the shit of them and like mm-hmm. i don't blame them like you made dinosaurs and you're gonna have people come to it as a amusement park and like yeah i love this scene because they're ripping them and then malcolm is you know going off on his rants like and then the lawyer's there he's like oh this is gonna be great like we can charge you know thousands of dollars two thousand ten thousand dollars a day and we got merch Mm -hmm. and hammond is like oh i don't want this for like for rich people you know i want the day-to-day people yeah and the lawyer's like oh we can have like a coupon day or something (laughs) (laughs) and uh and then they're like ripping hammond and hammond's like what is going on like you guys just have my back, but now I have the weasel fucking bloody lawyer who's yeah. going behind me. But like, he's so delusional, uh, delusional. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Um, mm-hmm. He has this like white blur in front of him where he's just like, I don't know. He just thinks it's just such a brilliant idea and nothing can go wrong. And like, I understand his excitement like Mm. that, like you're cloning dinosaurs. Like that is fucking cool. But I mean, kind of because they mentioned that he stole it. Yeah. From other researchers. Yeah. But like, he's the one that's doing it though. Right. Like he's got the park. Yeah. Yeah. So like you can understand his excitement, but at the same time, like, yeah, maybe you feel like you have all the security measures, but like you need to listen to the experts and and like in this uh-huh. circumstance. But like, if you're gonna clone dinosaurs, like stick to the fucking herbivores. Yeah. Like, why are you cloning two of the most dangerous fucking dinosaurs that ever walked the yeah. earth? Like, you brought them on the island. Yeah. For them to like speak the truth. Mm-hmm. And when they're in there in, in the lab and they see the eggs hatching, um, which like that looks, looks fucking amazing, man. Mm-hmm. Even today, like, holy yeah. shit. 
uh but the dino hatches in um i don't know how grant didn't realize he was a raptor uh, at first, yeah but he's like petting it and like you know close and it's like oh what species are these and then woo is like a raptor and he just like the look on his face he's just like you're breeding raptors and yeah. it was like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no big deal yeah but yeah man he's crazy mm-hmm. like even when they're going on the tour and like shit's kind of hitting the fan a little bit. Like he brought his fucking grandkids there. Yeah. Like 10 and eight years old. Dude, man. And then whenever they're getting attacked, like he he's lost them at this point. He doesn't know where the fuck they are. What's he doing? He's sitting there talking to Ellie eating ice cream. Like, should you not be like in the security tower looking for these fucking kids? Yeah. Who are you are responsible for? Yeah. And I mean, he didn't learn the first time in this movie. There's fucking two other islands that he has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and he's just shelling out money too, because to get them there, he said he would fund their dig for three years. Yeah. Which I'm sure that's not cheap. No, definitely not. Especially like judging dude, by their reactions. And like every scene, he's like, oh, spared no expense, spared no expense. Yeah. That's all he cares about. Yeah. Um, so another storyline that we have uh, is um, Dennis uh, Dennis Nedry, who is uh, Wayne Knight's character. Um, what do you think of this storyline? Like, do you think it's kind of slop? Not slop, like sloppily put together. I don't know if I would say sloppily put together. I mean, you can only assume that something like this would happen in real life. Like this guy is capable of holding the fucking like embryos of these dinosaurs. Like, you know that there's going to be somebody that's corrupted enough that will take those and try and sell them for a huge amount of money. Um, I guess with the rest of the movies, uh, they kind of have to have one like kind of bad human guy. Yeah, you've kind of set it up for that now. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, in this movie, like you could almost have just Hammond being the the bad human guy. Like I know he he's an old man and he seems like he has good intentions. Yeah. But the fact that he like all he cares about is the part. Um, I think in the book, from what I like kind of read a bit of that's what michael crichton was going for kind of yeah i think yeah but uh, yeah hammond is a lot different in the book than he is in the movie um but like the whole i'm I, i'm pretty sure the whole nedry storyline is in the book too right but um i had i don't like that you don't know like why well you know why he's doing it because he's not getting enough money from Hammond but you don't know like who the people is that he's trying to give these to Mm -hmm. like all you get from his storyline is that meme that everyone has now (laughs) and he's at like lunch and he's like oh we got Mitchell over here Mitchell he's like see (laughs) no one cares (laughs) yeah but like you don't know who they are. You just know that he's getting fifty thousand dollars per embryo. Yeah, and they have the little, uh, the little fucking shaving cream can. I used to think that was the coolest thing. Me too. Yeah. I was like, I want one of those. I can hide whatever I want in it. Yeah, and you get you know, so excited. They're like, oh yeah, it's like chilled, so no one will know. Like, yeah, you know, and you can use it. And yeah. The fucking squeal that he lets out. Oh man, it's just like uh, <clears throat> I fucking don't like Wayne Knight at all. Uh 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 didn't use the magic word. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, they arrive on the island and they're taking them out, showing them you meet the uh Brachiosaurus. Uh I mean we've already talked about it, but what are your thoughts on the CGI dinos? Uh, somehow somehow they made their cgi look really fucking good even yeah. this many years later yeah like the company that made that did this cgi like fucking kudos to them because yeah. there is like 
fucking hundred thousand or hundred million dollar movies out there with CGI that does not hold up the way that this does. Yeah. Yeah, I think I want to see if there's a 4K release out for this because like even on like the Blu-ray, like it looks phenomenal. Yeah. I watched it on Blu-ray and it looked fucking great. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. I love this scene too because they're just driving along and Ellie's like looking at the map and she's not paying attention. And then Grant like kind of looks and he like the look on his face, it like perfectly encapsulates like the feelings that you would have witnessing yeah. that. He's just like, like he throws his glasses off and he just like stands up and he's like in complete awe. And she's just talking away, looking at her map yeah. and he literally grabs her head and turns it. Yeah. And like just that scene, the awe that they have witnessing yeah. what they are. Yeah. And then they have the music going on. It's mm-hmm. just like, oh. oh, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like the CGI, I think looks fantastic. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So like the whole time Ian is flirting with Ellie, like hard. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. Yeah. Uh, and then we they meet the uh, Triceratops, yeah. Which that that is my favorite dinosaur of all time. Nice, I love the Triceratops. Uh, there's actually a new show that just uh, premiered Apple TV. Yeah, I saw that the prehistoric one. I think David Attenborough is narrating it too. Maybe that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, it looks sick. Um, yeah, they meet the Triceratops and like. How cool would it have been to like work on this movie, like mm-hmm. to be one of the actors and just to like be so up close to it and like yeah. they're not scared to be up close to it, like the uh like the characters, mm-hmm. like they're just getting right in there to try and help and figure out, you know, what's wrong with the, the triceratops. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Um touching on that, another trivia that I found. Um about like not being scared getting close to the the dinosaurs and stuff Mm -hmm. um with the t-rex uh the crew had to have multiple safety meetings about it because it weighed twelve thousand pounds holy shit um and they would use flashing lights to announce when it was about to come on to alert the crew because if you stood next to it and like whenever it swings its head it felt like a bus was driving past you that's how fucking heavy it was and how fast it would move Wow. Yeah. So, like, imagine getting fucking accidentally beamed by that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. This ain't no Tammy and the T Rex. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, like, Triceratops is sick. And uh, this line makes you laugh so hard every fucking time. They look through the, the, uh, the feces. Yeah. And they find the feces. It's just, just Big pile of poop. Yep. <laughs> and classic Ian Malcolm, just like, that's one big pile of shit. <laughs> um, uh, this is delivery. is so yeah, good. Yeah. I love his character. Yeah. Um, so the next big, probably one of the biggest scenes is uh, the T-Rex scene. They are going out. It's the big storm coming in. They end up stopping uh, at the T-Rex enclosure. There's a goat outside. The T-Rex ends up, oh, they lose power because Wayne, or not Wayne. Um, Nedry. Nedry shuts all the power off because he's trying to steal the embryos, which he successfully does. Mm-hmm. Uh, the T-Rex breaks out. And I have a very big flaw with this movie okay that i've never realized before okay is the map of the park okay so okay so the t-rex breaks out right yeah it the whole side where like the rex is he breaks out whenever the car gets pushed to the side and Grant and the kids are hanging off the side. Mm. Where does this big fucking cliff come from? That's a fair point. And 
it's like a drop off of like 50 feet. Yeah. There's like mountains right beside them that you can see in the shot before. Yeah. And like, and then after we'll go back to this, but then they climb up a tree and there's the Brachiosaurus right there. Mm. So like, how are they there? And then later on when they're like, running through they see the gallimimus and the t-rex shows up like i, th- I thought all these dinosaurs were in separate enclosures because like when they spring the breakers it has like you know the herbivores then it has like the t-rex by himself so like, yeah how is the t-rex in those enclosures with him that's a very good point because they're beside the t-rex enclosure like you said like and like there's even the goat there and then all of a sudden the goat disappears and well, the uh, goat comes up from underground. That's true, yeah. So like how like is the, there that the, big fucking Yeah, the goat's like cliff. on a platform. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good point. <laughs> I mean never... like it's like a, it doesn't bother me that much. It's like mm-hmm. it just doesn't really make any sense. But that's very true. Yeah. Hmm. So that's like the only thing that bugs people with this movie, but Call up Stevie, we'll find out. Yeah. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I mean, this scene with the T-Rex is just, uh, it's legendary, man. Mm -hmm. Um, The lawyer deserved to die. He left the kids there. Yep. But then the kids were also equally as fucking dumb because, well, Lex is, because she turns on the flashlight (laughs) and is, like, waving around and the T-Rex obviously goes to it and Tim is, like, what are you doing? Turn the light off. Yeah. And they can't. Then they're shining it up in the roof. T-Rex. <laughs> like cover it up. Like if you can't shut yeah. it off, at least cover it up. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand what her thought process was turning on this flashlight. Yeah. Really don't I mean, get like it. Grant and them know that you're in the car. So they know you're there. Yeah. You know? But yeah. yeah. Um, how fucking terrified would you be during that scene where the oh T-Rex God. Like goes through the roof. Yeah. And they're like I I mean, I don't think there could be anything scarier. No. Like I really don't. Like I don't know what I I, I don't know what I would do. I'd probably pass out from fear. Yeah. Like I'd I'd fucking tuck my tail between my legs. I'm gonna die right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally. I don't know. Yeah, like what do you do? You can't get out of the car because apparently there's a cliff right beside you. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah i don't know maybe your best bet is to try and climb in and get underneath the car mm-hmm. maybe i wonder i want to see how they filmed that scene because like you said if it's like a twelve thousand pound machine and like the head is going into the kids it, yeah. well, it's probably stunt doubles i guess maybe uh-huh. but you know like yeah that's crazy yeah it is oh man like i love the the glass like the water glass yeah. And how you see the ripples. Mm-hmm. And uh, Spielberg wanted us as viewers to know that the T Rex was there before um, we could actually see it. And uh, I forget, I think it was a train going by or something like that. And that's where he got the inspiration for the water. Oh, okay. Um, and it, like it made his, like the water in his glass, like ripple. And they were struggling so hard to replicate that. And then it eventually, (laughs) eventually the way that they did it was putting guitar strings underneath the dash of the car. And there was a guitar player outside of it. And he was like plucking the guitar strings. (laughs) And that's how they did it. That's so funny. Yeah. I also read that to get the, the t-rex like growl or whatever oh yeah there was like seven different animals that they had to get it's, yeah like, some ridiculous animals like it's stupid <laughs> like a cat a pig a, a cow and... yeah, yeah yeah uh so yeah they are uh grant ends up distracting the t-rex with the flare throws it and then for some reason malcolm grabs it and he does it too i don't know why but he throws the flare and then the t-rex just keeps chasing him yeah and he runs into the bathroom stall with uh the lawyer and malcolm gets like kind of hit away 
um, and covered up. And then the T-Rex, like everything falls so perfectly. And the guy's just like <laughs> on the toilet. Yeah. And, uh, and like, there's only two kills in it, but both kills are fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then Grant ends up going back to the kids because the T-Rex flipped the car over and basically smushed the car. And they are... They get thrown over the edge. And then another question I had is where the fuck did Ellie go? She went, she, cause she stayed with the Triceratops, right? Okay. okay. And then she went back to the, uh, the facility with the guy that she was with. Dude, I was so confused because like the next scene, when it goes back to the facility, Ellie's just there. And I was like, what the fuck? How'd she get back so quick? <laughs> yeah, no, she wanted to stay and help him uh, with no, the right. Triceratops. Yeah, okay, I remember that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they get thrown off the side. Uh, Tim is still in the car whenever it gets thrown out off the side. Um, I didn't like Lex at the start of the movie, but I kind of like she didn't get as annoying throughout the movie. She kind of like Kind of grew a pair of balls, if you know what yeah, I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, that's sexist, but yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I really like the scene, it's really uh suspenseful whenever the car is in it. And mm-hmm. I love when Grant goes up to it because like he hates kids, and Lex basically says, like, she's so freaking out, she's like, He left us, he left us, and yeah, Grant's just like, I'm not gonna leave you. Mm-hmm. And he goes up to the car, and I love the first thing that Tim says. He's like, I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like so heartbroken by it. And Grant's yeah. just like, Understandable. Yeah, I'm not going to sign when you throw up, Tim. Okay, let's just go. Yeah. And like this scene is so intense when the car's falling and they're just like booking it down that tree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's really heartfelt moment when they're in the tree, uh, like sleeping, and like Grant is starting to like like the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Brachiosaurus shows up and it sneezes on Lex. Yeah, I uh, love this scene too because like they're they're sitting up in the tree, so they're kind of like overlooking. I don't want to say the horizon, but like they're overlooking this like huge like forest kind of thing, mm-hmm. and they can hear the brachiosaurus is like talking to each other yeah um and then grant starts making the noises too and then all of a sudden you see all their heads pop up yeah i was like oh like it's just so cool and then like how you said one comes like right up to them and like uh lex is like freaking out because she doesn't know anything about dinosaurs right tim's the the big dinosaur fan yeah and she's like why are you calling that monster over here yeah yeah and grant's like he's not a monster like like it's not going to hurt you. And I'm just like, every time I watch this movie, I just think like, how fucking cool would that be? Yeah. Like we've gone to zoos before and like fed drafts, like on, on those great big, like Mm -hmm. the platform things. And like, it, it just reminds me of that, but like with a fucking dinosaur. Yeah. Like that'd be so cool. Yeah. I like how he says, Oh, it's just a giant cow. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I like cows. (laughs) (laughs) I hate that he threw his uh, talent away, though. Because mm-hmm. he's like, kind of like, well, I guess dinosaurs are back. I don't need this anymore. Yeah. Because like, they ask him, like, what are you going to do f- for work now? And I think he he says something that I think Ian said before about, like, the dinosaurs, like, adjusting to mm-hmm. change or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we get a quick look at uh, Dennis. Uh, let's talk about his death because I think it's pretty fucking terrifying. The dinosaur he's with, um, yep. I guess the Dilapa, Dilaposaurus, uh, Dilap, uh, Dilophosaurus, Dilophosaurus. Uh, so he's it's like a middle of like a big ass storm. He like hits some sign. I guess he has to go through this enclosure to get to the dock. I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but he ends up getting lost and he runs into this dino, which like it looks, you know, cute and stuff. And he's trying to throw a stick and then 
he gets back up to his car and it spits. I think uh, Grant says like it spits like this mucus that like paralyzes you and stuff. Mm. So it gets on him and then the dinosaur like brings up as like his frilly things is making this crazy ass noise. Yeah. It's fucking scary. And then he gets in the car and <laughs> the dino's in the car. Yeah. And then it spits like in his eyes and he's just like, ah, and then it Screaming. just fucking kills him. Yeah. Um, so I have a little trivia on, on the Dilophosaurus. All right. The venom spitting uh-huh. and the frilly thing, uh, was made up for the movie. Really? So they, um, at the time they originally thought that the Dilophosaurus was, um, that its jaw would be too small like judging off of um, like what they found in fossils and stuff, that its jaw would be too small and it wouldn't have the bite force to oh, actually yeah. like kill a human. So for, I think it was for the book, Crichton added in the whole venom spitting oh, okay, to give it this sort of like extra menacing kind of uh, approach. Mm-hmm. But then later research found out that like, in fact, they, very easily could have fucking ripped a human to shreds oh no doubt yeah yeah but yeah for for the story of jurassic park i can't remember if it was made up for the book or for the movie um but the whole venom thing yeah it's not real Hmm. which makes sense because like that's a kind of a weird thing to to have no i guess like i I mean skunk shoots smelly fart out of their butt i mean that's kind of silly <laughs> that's fair that's fair uh so some little plot lines that kind of happen um <clears throat> so all of the locks are off in the the park because uh dennis left and so they're trying to figure out how to get them back on he has like this kind of password on his computer and it's super fucking annoying but even tom is getting super annoyed with it he's like a oh, fucking dennis is like workspace has like chips and like oh, shit yeah, it's everywhere disgusting. it's disgusting so they figure out that they just have to reset the whole um park basically mm-hmm. so the breakers for the grids are in this maintenance shed at the end other end of the uh compound mm-hmm um and then while that's happening uh oh they end up saving ian mal ian they ellie and uh muldoon they go and get them that scene is intense too yeah with the t-rex chasing them yeah 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 uh i love the the kind of throwback i think in toy story 2 i just watched but uh when they're in the department store and rex is chasing them (laughs) Yeah, that's good. Um, <clears throat> so they get him. Uh, Ellie and Tom are going to go to the shed to flip the breakers. And then meanwhile, Grant's Tim or Lex are making their way. I don't even know if they know where they're going. Like, I'm guessing Grant does, but like, I don't know how he would. I'm sure he maybe has like an idea, like we need to go north or we need to go yeah. south or something yeah. like that so they're in like this giant ass field and they see these kind of like bird like dinos mm-hmm. uh they're a gallimimus i think uh yeah i didn't write it down but oh yeah um, yeah gallimimus yeah yeah and they're hiding behind like this uh big tree and then you see the t-rex come out it looks fucking great man it still looks mm-hmm. good um and then while they're walking through to uh grant finds dinosaur eggs that hatched so you know that they're breeding that Malcolm was basically right. Like yeah. the dinosaurs will just adapt to life because yeah. they can change their uh, sex because they have that frog DNA. Mm-hmm. Which is a really <laughs> fucking cool addition to, to the storyline. Like yeah. for, for them to think of that, I thought that like, that's fucking really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, you kind of get this like back and forth scene. Um, Ellie makes it to the the shed. Oh, I like to before 
whenever they're like going, her and Muldoon, and Muldoon's like, okay, I'll go to the main shit. And Ellie's like, oh, I'll go with you. And then Hammond, like the fucking old bastard, is like, oh, you're going. I mean, like, I'm a man and you're uh and she's just like, oh shut up, we don't have time to talk about sexism yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Yeah. Uh it's like really, man, like you can barely fucking walk. Do you think you're gonna make it <laughs> to there? <laughs> um so it's kind of like this really suspenseful multiple scenes going on at the same time. Basically, you have Muldoon and Ellie. They realize that the raptors escaped out of their enclosure. So uh Muldoon thinks he has like the main mother raptor who ended up like killing, I think three of the raptors. Mm -hmm. Um, So he tells Ellie to run. She gets there. She's like flipping on the breakers at the same time uh, that Tim, Lex and Grant get to this, like the perimeter fence basically. Mm -hmm. So they are climbing with the fence and Tim is like almost all the way down. And like this part kind of doesn't, it doesn't make any sense at all actually, but because like, before he was going down that tree like faster than grant that's true and now he's like barely making it Mm -hmm. um so she's flipping the switch and then it ends up turning on and shocks tim off of the fence uh in real life tim would have his legs and his arms would have literally been blown off yeah isn't it like ten thousand watts or something Ten thousand volts yeah volts yeah 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 you're fucked (laughs) yeah like i've had heard stories in like my field because i sell to like lectures and stuff but like there was a guy who touched a live panel board that was i think it was like a thousand volts two thousand volt and it literally exploded him out of his boots like all that was there was his boots and his like his feet what the rest of his body was gone oh my god yeah so like that would kill him like what the fuck that's yeah. insane yeah. uh so that's not very uh accurate accurate but <laughs> i mean it's a movie you know yeah but i love the, the look of tim after this happens yeah like his hair is all wild and um uh back at the the shed ellie finds uh <laughs> tom's arm oh man <laughs> when she like because the raptor is there and she gets scared and she's like, his arm like falls down and she's like, oh, Tom, thank God. <laughs> and then it's like his arm is just like freaks the fuck out and the raptor ends up getting stuck there. Yeah. But. Uh, so we kept saying that there's only two kills, but there's like four. Guess, maybe. Yeah. Because there's Tom, there's uh, Nedry, there's the lawyer and then there's the guy at the start with the raptor. Oh, and Muldoon dies. Or uh, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, because he's just... like he has the <clears throat> the like main mother like lined up with the gun, mm-hmm. and then I mean this is probably one of the most memorable lines from the movie. I mean there's a lot of them, but yeah, whenever he just sees the one beside him, he's just like doesn't even freak out. He's just like clever girl, yeah, and then he ends up getting killed by the raptor, yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, what uh, do you want to go into the scene with uh, Lex and Tim enjoying their scrumptious dessert? Uh, yeah. So they end up making their way back to the uh, the facility. I don't even know what we would call it. Yeah, just a facility, whatever. Um, and then like they're sitting there, they're like this fucking giant ass spread of like all these different desserts and like ice cream and like jello and shit like that and they're just sitting there fucking mowing into it and then all of a sudden you can see the shadow of a raptor on the wall yeah and it i think El, uh lex sees it right it was her yeah. that sees it man like the acting in this scene mm-hmm. by both of them is yeah. so good so good yeah Cause like you know they're sitting there happy enjoying the dessert, and then like Tim like smiles at Lax, and then her face just like drops. It's a total one eighty, man. Yeah. So then they uh, 
they sneak into the kitchen and um is there three at this point or is there just a two no there's just the two just the two yeah and the fucking raptors end up following them in there and this whole like this is between this and the t-rex scene it's the most iconic scenes in the movie like when you think of jurassic park you think of that t-rex scene with the car and you think of this kitchen scene Mm -hmm. um because the kids are just like scrambling through and the raptors are like they're clicking their talons on the floor and it's almost it's like morse code they're just like click 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 click. um and the kids are like trying to make their way through the kitchen and then one of the raptors jumps up on the counter so it can like see and it's the the suspense and the heart racing it's Mm -hmm. it's it's intense yeah um you really feel like you're in there with the kids i think like the way that it's shot yeah um and i love the one scene where the raptor thinks that it's looking at ellie but it's it's a mirror dude even that had me fucked up yeah like every time i see it you know yeah and the raptor just comes like running towards it and it ends up just being a reflection yeah it fucking like slams itself into this <laughs> like stainless steel like cabinet yeah but yeah yeah i like the uh the transition um whenever ellie gets back to i think the rest of them and she finds grant uh they're like oh is like it's all taken care of and she's like oh there's a raptor in the shed but i mean we're good as long as it can't op- open it doesn't learn how to open doors and then immediately transitions to the kitchen yeah. and you see the door handle just go like that and you're yeah. like holy fuck <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah the other raptor it ends up Tim, for some reason, tries to run away into the freezer and then it slides into it. And then he ends up uh, um, locking it in, locking it in there. Yeah. I think that was all like he did that on purpose. Did I he? think I think they lured it in there. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Tim's a smart kid, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how that dinosaur got out, though. Because there's like three raptors that show up at the end, right? Yeah. Unless it didn't, and there were it was other ones. Maybe. But I mean, those freezers, like when I used to work in a kitchen, they have like if you get locked in, they have uh like a button on the inside that you can push and it oh, unlocks okay. the freezer door. Yeah. So maybe the raptor figured that out. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I would be either. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's normally like a big red button. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Tim takes a beating in, during this movie. Yeah, he does. Like, I don't know how he survived, but I'd never talk to my grandfather again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, uh, let's guess. Talk about the last scene. Mm-hmm. Um, another iconic scene. Basically, they all make it to the security room. There's another uh raptor who's like trying to get in who can like do the locks for the door handle uh lexi ends up she like knows the computer system so she finds the way to lock the door doesn't really help because the raptor just crashes through the glass window (laughs) and uh, they make it up to the roof and they make it out into the main like lobby where there's like a dino um skeleton and they all like get on different like parts of the skeleton and the raptors like jump on and more raptors show up and then they kind of like huddle close together and they're like, oh shit, this is it. And one of the raptors like lunges to get a grant and then all of a sudden the T-Rex just comes out of fucking nowhere and snatches it midair. So sick. And then just like fights the other two and it's sick, man. Mm-hmm. So, like, ultimately, the T-Rex is the hero in the end. Yeah, he is. is. But, yeah, and then that all leads up to that final scene that I was talking to. Because, like, they obviously get out. Yeah. Um, A helicopter comes and takes them away. But then we get that iconic T-Rex just, like, roaring. And the Jurassic Park banner comes falling falling down over top of it. 
it's sweet. Yeah, and then they're like leaving on the helicopter. You see all like the pelicans and mm-hmm. stuff, and yeah. yeah, it's a good ending. I agree. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else that uh, you want to mention that we didn't talk about? Nope, I don't think so. I kind of mentioned everything else. Okay. All right. Well, that's the way the blood splatters. And this is a long ass episode. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Holy shit. All right. What did you rate this movie? So, as much as I wanted to give it a perfect score, I can't give it a perfect score. Uh, so, story gave an eight out of 10. Okay. Um, I said, a wonderful science fiction movie with great characters and writing, an intense and thrilling ride that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. Uh, I mentioned it does have a few plot holes. Um, quality, I gave it a 10 out of 10 for quality. I mean, what is there to say, really? Uh, absolute perfection when it comes to the quality of the movie, the acting, cinematography, CGI, practical effects. The score, I mean, that's just perfect. So 8 out of 10 for the story and 10 out of 10 for the quality. Cool. Uh, my story, I gave it a nine out of ten. Okay. Uh, so this was one of the most original movies of its time, and considering that it was based off. Oh, that was another thing I want to br- bring up. Um, they bought the rights to uh, Crichton's novel before he even finished it. Oh, I think I did read that somewhere. Yeah, they were so um, enthralled by it and like confident in it that they were, they gave him two million dollars for the rights to it. I would ask for more. Well, he did. Oh, okay. um, he negotiated. Uh, well, I shouldn't say negotiated because he came back with a non-negotiable offer of 1.5 million and then a percentage of what the movie made. Wow. So he came out on uh, top. <laughs> Mart on him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this movie made over a billion dollars worldwide. Yeah. Uh, Steven Spielberg alone got $250 million from this movie. Jeez, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Smart on him, man. Holy. Yeah, big time. Um, so anyways, yeah. So I said this is one of the most original movies of its time. And considering it was based off Creighton's novel before the novel's even finished, blows my mind. Uh, it spawned many successful sequels that aren't always great, but they're all still very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, the novel obviously explains so much more about what's going on, but the screenplay did a great job of condensing the information down to a two hour film. Uh, the movie has it all action, horror, edgier seat suspense. Um, I found myself caring about all the characters, even Hammond. Like, I don't think he's an evil man. I just think that he's delusional and stupid. Yeah. Um, and like, you can respect his, uh, I guess, adoration for what he's done. Um, I mean, I'd be the same way, probably like if I was able to do this, like I would probably have my blinders up too and just be like, this needs to be fucking successful because this is the coolest shit ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you pointed out some plot holes that I'd never really thought about. So I guess that. Yeah, it makes sense. Not quite perfect, but pretty fucking close. Yeah. My quality, I also gave it a 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Um, I said I can't give this movie enough praise in terms of its quality. The cinematography is stunning. The score is incredible. And it's instantly recognized by almost anybody. The visual effects, both practical and CGI, still hold up to this day and somehow still look fucking incredible. Um, the acting wasn't always the greatest, but I don't care. I like, I don't watch yeah, this movie yeah. for the acting. Like, mm-hmm. um, I've watched this movie countless times and I'll continue watching it until the day that I can't anymore. So yeah, like, I, yeah, this movie has, this is a top tier movie for me. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's high up there. Yeah. All right. So safe to say we both love it. Yeah. All right, you guys know our scores. Let's head on over to Rotten Tomatoes and see what they've scored it. The critics' consensus. Jurassic Park is a spectacle of special effects and lifelike animatronics with some of Spielberg's best sequences of sustained awe and sheer terror since Jaws. 
So based off that, what do you think the critics rated it? I'm going to go 96%. A little bit lower. 92%. Ah, shit. Okay. That's being... uh... Generous? Generous, yeah. Uh, Yeah, 92% on 132 ratings and an average score of 8.4 out of 10. Nice. The audience rating, kind of shocking, 91%. Okay. On 250,000 ratings and an average score of 4.3 out of 5 or 8.6 out of 10. All right. All right. I kind of expected the audience score to be a little bit higher. Yeah. Like a 95. But that's fair. Anyways, what's Letterboxd got for us? So Letterboxd has a 4.1 out of 5. Uh, I give it a 4.5 out of 5. And you give it a 5 out of 5. Um, I didn't write down anyone else because there's way too many oh, man, reviews so many. on it. Yeah, But most of them are either a, f- a 4, 4.5 or a 5. So Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever met a person that doesn't like this movie. Yeah, me either. To be honest. I mean, like, and like, what, what about it could you not like? Yeah. Like when I'm, when I'm thinking about like the critics rating, it's a 92%. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a hundred percent. So there's people out there that don't like it. Yeah. What about this movie? Did you <laughs> not like? Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. Me either. But anyways, it is what it is. They're probably. No, I'm not even going to go there. Never mind. <laughs> Stay away from that one. People that don't believe dinosaurs were real. We'll just say that. Okay. Anyways, you ready for the scare section? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what'd you give for a scare rating? So I give it a three out of ten. Okay. Um, I said there were some truly scary and intense scenes. Uh, there wasn't that much gore. Like, I mean, you guess you kind of did see some blood and stuff like that, yeah. but um, really the only like gory kill was the lawyer that got eight. Yeah, and even um, still. But yeah. Uh, scariest scene. This one's kind of tough. I said the kitchen wrapper scene. Mm-hmm. That's because like of how well acted it is and of how intense it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And what I survive? Uh, I said I wouldn't go to an island full of dinosaurs, but if I had to, I'd one hundred percent be eaten. Would you not go? Like, if you had this thought process that like the security is top of the line. There's none better, no expenses lost or anything like that. If, if, okay. If it was, if it's me as like Dr. Grant or Malcolm going to like, make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. I'm not going. Okay. If it's like, it's been open, you know, for six months or a year, there's been no issues at all. (laughs) Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Right. And if fair, I can afford it. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. But what would you? Uh, my scare rating, I gave it a five out of 10. Okay. Okay. Um, I said so many aspects of this movie are terrifying. And the way that they set things up to make you feel like you're in the room or in the car or in the forest or like anywhere mm-hmm. where these dinosaurs are, like it just, it feels so real. It feels like you're right there with them. Yeah. Um, and like the whole raptor thing, like how they hide out in the, in the trees and shit like that. And like, you see one, but you don't see the two coming on the other side of you. Like that just, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not like, I don't know. It's not like a, a a horror scary. It's hard to describe. Like it just, it feels like a real horror. Mm Mm-hmm. It almost seems like something that could actually happen the way that they've done it. Yeah. Um, my scariest scene. I also said the rap, the raptor kitchen scene, but also 
uh, when Ellie, like when she's in that control or not the control room, but like the, where she's turning on all the power again mm. and the whole arm thing and the Raptors like busting its head through the pipes and shit. Like, yeah, that was scary. Yeah. Like that's a pretty intense jump scare. It is. Yeah. Uh, would I survive? I said, I'd like to say yes, but those Raptors would likely fuck me up. <laughs> yeah. They're too smart for you. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm so glad we did this movie. I know, me too. Uh, yeah. I had, a, I had a lot of fun watching it again and talking about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Me Amazing too. movie. Amazing yeah. movie. Agreed. But sadly, we have to move on. We do. Yes. Um, so we're going back to our regularly scheduled programming of having no schedule. <laughs> um, uh, so I get to pick the movie and half an hour before we recorded, I was like texted you. I'm like, fuck, I need to think of a movie. I've been so used to doing these themes that I just like yeah. forget about it. Um, I'm going a little off the rails for this one. Okay. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I did not see that coming. I knew you wouldn't. Uh, okay. Because uh, it's always been one that's kind of freaked me out. Um, yeah. The, the, the dude with the eyes and shit. Like, yeah. And it is, it's considered like a fantasy horror. Okay. Um, so I've yeah. only seen it the one time and it was like when it first came out. Yeah. And I don't really remember much from it except good that obviously that same guy. <laughs> but uh, all right, cool. I'm excited. Yeah. And it's directed by Guillermo del Toro. So, I mean, mm-hmm. he he's done horror. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's been one that... I don't, I don't want to say I've always wanted to talk about it, but it's been one that's been like popping up on lists and shit here and there. Mm-hmm. And I just think it'd be a really cool discussion. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm yeah. down. Sweet. Uh, and next month, we're also going to be doing a uh, episode on Jurassic Park Dominion or Jurassic World Dominion mm-hmm. um, with Felicia. Yeah. Uh, she was going to be coming on for two episodes, but sadly it's only going to be the one but yeah so we're going to be kind of going back to the prehistoric horror for one episode next month but yeah th- like that was the whole point of us of us doing that month right is to mm-hmm. kind of lead up to that movie yeah but yeah i'm excited all right Me too. anyways so yeah if you guys want to catch us on social media you can find us at a podcast on elm street on instagram and facebook if you click the link in our bio on Instagram, you will find links to our T Public account where we have our merch. And we're going to be getting a new design soon. I don't know when, mm-hmm. but soon we have somebody working on it. Uh, the same guy who did our uh, big explosion one with us riding the moose. And <laughs> um, yeah, our good friend Cody, he's going to be doing another one for us. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, There's also links to our Patreon account if you wish to support the podcast that way. And there's links to each of our individual Letterboxd accounts, our YouTube channel, um, our Discord server, and anywhere that you can find us. I mean, listen to us. Or watch us. Or watch us, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that wraps up this week, and we will talk to you next week. See you later.